Bienvenidos a una experiencia única en la naturaleza, donde la majestuosidad de la vida salvaje se entrelaza con la inmensidad de la tierra. Estamos aquí, en el corazón de África, para explorar el mágico Parque Nacional Masai Mara en Kenia. A lo largo de este programa, nos sumergiremos en este santuario de la vida salvaje, donde la naturaleza revela su verdadera grandeza y nos invita a ser testigos de la danza eterna, de la supervivencia y la armonía. So, my name is Alex Jacket. I'm one of the locals around near Fairmont. I was born here in the Mara. I was also raised here in the Mara. And uh, we are currently at Fairmont Mara Safari Club. Fairmont Mara Safari Club is located in Olchoro Urua Conservancy. Uh, in the wall of the Mara, we have got a total of around 17 conservancies. And uh, Olchoro Conservancy is one of them. That is now where Fairmont is located. This is now the part of the Mara. You've heard about the Masai Mara National Game Reserve. And uh, we have the migratory corridors for the wildlife, or we call them the bavasons. And these are actually the conservancies. The Mara is, uh, measures around 15, 10 square kilometers, with the conservancies being adjacent. So all the animals that you see in the Mara, in the Serengeti, because it is the same ecosystem, you'll still see them here in the conservancies. So the Olchoro Conservancy and the Masai Mara Game Reserve is located in Naro County. And uh, I've been working here at Fairmont for almost seven years now as a safari guide. I went to some schooling. I did a bachelor's degree on travel and tour operations management. So I've actually specialized on tour guiding management and the basic ecology preservation of Eastern Africa, flora and fauna. I'm now 27 years of age. So the Mara is actually known of the Big Five. And uh, the Big Five is just a marketing name that has been used as a marketing tool in the tourism industry. So this refers to the period when most of the animals were being hunted. We had these animals that were mostly of high profile. They were mostly sought after by the sport game hunters. That is the rhino, the buffalo, the lion, we have the leopard, and also the African elephants. So these animals were killed because of their ivory, some because of their claws, and also their hides on the skin. That is the big five. You can as well see the hippos and the crocodiles along the Mara River, because the Mara River is actually the largest river that runs around 3,500 kilometers from the Mao complex area, and it drains all the way to Lake Victoria. You will as well see a variety of species of uh, giraffes. We have the Maasai giraffe around. We have the common plain game animals like the wild beast. We also have the zebras. We have the several species of antelopes. That is the gazelles, the topis, you know, the eland. You also have the water bugs. You have the topi antelope, several of them. Apart from that, you also have a variety of species of birds. We have almost around 450 species of birds here in the world of the Mara. And uh, all these animals, they come up uh, in different wildlife habitats. So all these habitats, because we have the riverine forest, we have the open plains and the savanna, we also have the hill and the rocky areas, you'll see several species of snakes and reptiles too. Uh, conservation actually comes up with different advantages. But now the challenges that I mostly encounter here in the field actually are varied and multifaceted at the same time. First thing is that uh, we actually have the number of wildlife for now that is uh, specific species of animals that have been actually going down for the last years. And uh, the species of the cheetah is actually going down, same to the elephants. But for now we have uh, a program by the Mara Elephant Project that is actually doing all that to ensure that their number is well and going up. Another challenge is actually here in the Mara because the local community here, that is the Maasai, they mostly depend on tourism and conservation as their uh, economic model. And uh, the great challenge is actually when we have a pandemic like the COVID-19, it was a huge blow to the world of the Mara because 
People usually have the guaranteed revenue, but they mostly depend and it's accrued from tourism. During the COVID, everything was shuttered and nothing was going to the local community. And uh, that's actually one of the things. You also have the aspect of seasonality. So actually in the Mara, we, all year round, we have all animals always. The only difference is actually the wild beast, which is one of the seventh wonder of the world. It happens every year from the month of July all the way to around October. So during the months of uh, January, February, all the way to May, there is actually a low number of tourists coming in here. That means there is also low revenue to the local communities. And uh, if you also talk of the aspect of the game drives that I personally actually encounter, us as the guides, our experience with the guests is actually different. Sometimes we end up being blamed by the guests for things that are beyond our control. Let's say, for example, guests come with different determination, different interests. They want to see a leopard. They want to see this. They want to see this. And you know, all these animals are in their free roaming space. We can't always guarantee that you will see this. When it rains, for example, it derails the whole activity of going for a game drive, hunting and looking for these animals. You end up being, you know, blamed at the same time. Bienvenidos a una de las maravillas naturales más increíbles del mundo, el Masai Mara, un santuario de vida salvaje donde la naturaleza se despliega en toda su majestuosidad. A continuación, exploraremos a los cinco grandes animales que reinan en estas vastas llanuras. Leones las leonas en el Masai Mara destacan por su pelaje dorado y elegante porte. Estos felinos cazadores hábiles trabajan en manadas coordinadas para acechar y derribar presas, siendo fundamentales para el equilibrio ecológico al controlar poblaciones de herbívoros. Además de su destreza cazadora, exhiben complejos comportamientos sociales, desarrollando fuertes lazos familiares. Las leonas no solo son esenciales para la supervivencia de su especie, sino que también atraen a visitantes de todo el mundo que buscan admirar su belleza y presenciar la fascinante dinámica de la vida salvaje en esta emblemática reserva africana. Los búfalos en el Masai Mara contribuyen significativamente a la dinámica del ecosistema siendo parte esencial de la fauna salvaje en esta reserva de vida silvestre en Kenia. Con su masa imponente y cuernos curvados, los búfalos forman manadas cohesionadas que desempeñan un papel crucial en la regulación de la vegetación y el control de la hierba alta. Estos herbívoros, a menudo denominados los cinco grandes, junto con otros animales icónicos de la región, son una atracción impresionante para los visitantes que buscan presenciar la interacción social y la formidable presencia de estas manadas en el vasto paisaje del Masai Mara. Su importancia ecológica y su imponencia hacen que la observación de búfalos sea una experiencia destacada durante los safaris, completando la rica variedad de vida salvaje que caracteriza a esta emblemática reserva. Los leopardos en el Masai Mara añaden un toque de misterio y elegancia a la rica diversidad de la vida silvestre en esta reserva keniana. Estos felinos, conocidos por su pelaje moteado y habilidades de acecho extraordinarias, ocupan el papel de depredadores solitarios. La presencia de leopardos en la región agrega emoción a los safaris, ya que son criaturas esquivas y difíciles de avistar. Su destreza en la caza, combinada con su capacidad para trepar árboles, les otorga una posición única en el ecosistema. Los leopardos, a pesar de su naturaleza solitaria, son esenciales para el equilibrio poblacional al controlar las poblaciones de presas. La posibilidad de avistar a uno de estos elegantes cazadores 
añade un elemento que intriga y maravilla a la experiencia de explorar el Maasai Mara. Los elefantes en el Masai Mara son imponentes gigantes que contribuyen significativamente a la riqueza biológica de esta reserva de vida silvestre en Kenia. Con sus grandes orejas desplegadas y colmillos distintivos, estos majestuosos paquidermos desempeñan un papel crucial en la modulación del paisaje. Desempeñan un papel crucial en la modulación del paisaje y la promoción de la biodiversidad. Actúan como ingenieros del ecosistema al crear y mantener hábitats, además de ser dispersores de semillas esenciales para la regeneración de la vegetación. La observación de manadas de elefantes en el Masai Mara ofrece a los visitantes una experiencia inolvidable, ya que pueden presenciar la compleja estructura social y la inteligencia excepcional de estos animales destacando su importancia tanto a nivel ecológico como cultural. Los rinocerontes en el Masai Mara, parte integral de la riqueza de la vida silvestre en esta reserva de Kenia, representan una presencia majestuosa y vulnerable. Estos robustos herbívoros, ya sea el rinoceronte blanco o negro, desempeñan un papel crucial en la biodiversidad al contribuir al equilibrio del ecosistema. Lamentablemente, los rinocerontes enfrentan amenazas significativas debido a la caza furtiva, especialmente por sus preciados cuernos. Los esfuerzos de conservación en la región buscan proteger a estos animales emblemáticos y preservar su hábitat, brindando a los visitantes la oportunidad única de admirar su imponencia y participar en la crucial tarea de garantizar la supervivencia de estas especies en peligro de extinción. En el Masai Mara, la interconexión entre estos cinco grandes animales y su entorno crea un ballet natural asombroso. Este es un recordatorio de la importancia de conservar y proteger estos tesoros de la naturaleza para las generaciones venideras. Uh, first of all, uh, this place is uh, called uh, Oljorua National uh, Conservancy. Uh, it's within Masai Mara ecosystem. So, The, pro uh, the project was started early in the year, uh, early 90s, uh, as an adoption program. So the rhinos were translocated from the national parks within and also some from South Africa. Uh, and the project went on successful and also the population increased to some near 10 rhinos. Uh, But uh, later in the year, the poaching was rampant in Africa. And as well, it, did, it didn't spare uh, the project within this place. So the rhinos were just uh, killed by bad guys in the society, poachers. Uh, and we end up losing almost everything to the two remaining. Uh, for the time being. The private sector had to partner with the national government. That's why we are here to safeguard the two rhinos for population increase and uh, for the future generation. It's now that the bull has grown to full maturity and it's showing natural capability that uh, they can breed. But uh, around eight years back, the female was pregnant when the bull still existed. Mm. But along the way, before one year, it miscarried. Uh, so since then, we have had a challenge of the bull. Mm. But because the species belongs to different family and mother, mm. so we are hopeful the bull can... Uh, the bull is 15 and the female is 20 years. Right. The, for, for 45 to 50. Okay. Yes, in a natural environment like this place, okay. where there is no stress, 
We have the great challenge of the global climate change. We have experienced that for now. The weather patterns are no longer predictable here in the Mara. Like for example, this month, August all the way to November, we should have already ex uh, experienced short rains. It should be raining by now. And uh, for now it's not raining. During the month of January, February, we, we always don't expect rains. But this year it was raining. So it's actually different. Uh, the weather patterns are no longer predictable. And uh, another thing is uh, this climate change has actually pushed the weather to extreme conditions. We have never you know, experienced floods here in the Mara. But in the year 2019, 2020, there was heavy floods. Most of the camps and the lodges along the river were swept away. And we also have adverse drought. Many animals actually die out of drought, you see? So that's actually one of the greatest challenges. Another thing, the great challenge that we face now, the tourism industry, especially the Kenya Tourism Board, is not regulating the number of tourists going into the attractions, especially here in the Mara. So we end up having what you call mass tourism. So most of the kids and the clients actually are not aware of the impacts that they cause to the environment. We end up, you know, displacing the animals. We end up encroaching their habitat. And uh, in a way, we also go into a condition that we interfere with the animal's breeding life. We interfere with the mating behavior because the number of the cars in a setting is always not well managed. And that is happening currently in the Maasai Mara National Game Reserve. In a setting where a cheetah is killed, you can have like almost 50 cars, which is too bad. We corner the animals. They need their own free roaming space so that we don't interfere. And uh, that's a great challenge. The mass tourism or responsible tourism is actually not advocated at the moment. Yes. Uh, I would like to say this. For us to actually ensure that these animals, these prestigious attractions, continues for many years, we have to keep these for the generations to come. And the only thing that we have to do is actually be the ambassadors of responsible tourism. These animals don't have the advocates. We are the advocates to speak out for them. We are the advocates to talk about the animal and the wildlife rights. All the wildlife management acts in the country they should actually be you know, implemented in a way that it ensures that there is a sustainable way of these animals to survive in the future. For the future generations to come and enjoy all these animals that we see around, all the beautiful landscapes, it actually needs and it takes what you call individual willingness for us to ensure that these attractions continue to be forever.